We have just time to answer a few letters from our listeners. And let's see. Here's a letter from Miss Amelia Jones of Billings Tavern, Jenksville. Miss Jones wants to know how much it would cost to build a model poultry house for 200 hens. I'm happy to say that my sponsors have printed a limited number of booklets giving complete costs and specifications. And if you'll cut off the top of a package of Bixby baking soda and send it to box 99, 99. 934, 934, Providence, Rhode Island, we will send you a copy by return mail. Goodbye, friends of the poultry hour. Now relax, Mr. Johnson, relax. Just imagine that you're in a steam room and a uh, uh, group. That's right, that's right. Amelia, uh, do we have an apple? Uh, I said, my dear, Mr. Johnson craves an apple. I could have sworn we had an apple here last week. Uh, no. uh, do you suppose that a banana would do, Mr. Johnson? No. I want an app. Hmm. Oh, my chickens will do so beautifully in that hen house. If only I had some chickens. Look, a guest. She's looking at the tavern, Amelia. Maybe she's going to buy it. Maybe I can get Dr. Lawrence off my yes. neck at last. Threatening to foreclose the mortgage every time he sees me. Oh, thank goodness I cleaned up. Twenty-three and a half percent compounded semi-annually. Good morning. This is the place for sale, isn't it? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, won't you come in? I'm Winnie Lydon from Springfield. They told me in town that this was an authentic colonial tavern. Authentic? It rightfully belongs in a museum, with everything in it. Really? This is Professor Nathaniel Billings, Doctor of Biochemistry, Century College, before it went under. What an adorable old cheese press. Yes, oh. yes. <laughs> and a pilgrim's table, hand-hewn beams, warped floors. Oh, uh, wouldn't you like to see some of the other rooms? Oh, everything. Oh, I know it isn't very businesslike to say this, but it's exactly what I've been looking for. It'll make the darlingest hotel. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, are you hurt? Isn't this wonderful? Worm-eaten steps. Yes, yes. And last of all, the old barn. They say it came over on the Mayflower. Ebenezer, you're home? Yep. Oh, do you mind if we show the place? No. Nope. Does he go with it? <laughs> no, nope, I go with the professor. Ah, uh, Ebenezer and Amelia have been devoted to me for years. If we ever get a few extra dollars together, Amelia wants to raise chickens and Ebenezer pigs to keep me in my old age. The only difference is I got pigs. <coughs> oh, I think that's sweet. <laughs> Shall we go back to the house? Uh, bye. Goodbye. Oh, Professor, I'm going to buy it. Good, good. Oh, I'm afraid there's just one little catch. Oh, well, I haven't too much money. Oh, my dear child, it isn't that. All I need would be enough to pay off the mortgage. But, but you see, all my laboratory apparatus is installed in the basement and and I must finish my experiment. Oh, of course. Then you wouldn't mind? I'd be delighted to have you. There's plenty of room for you and Amelia and Ebenezer, too. Oh, good, and we'll be delighted to live here with you. <laughs> Amelia, you phone Dr. Lawrence and say I'd like to see him immediately. Uh, don't you tell him it's about the mortgage. I want to do that. Professor, if you don't mind, what is your experiment? Oh, my dear child. I'm afraid it's completely beyond expressing in words that you could comprehend. Oh, I know that, but generally. Well, I... Merely toying with a few physiodynamics, shaking the unshakable laws of existence, so to speak, and... Gracious, the apple. 
Amelia, where did you put that apple? Oh, where do you suppose it would be, Professor? Ah. Uh, you're not going to eat it between meals. Why, I'm surprised at you. It's for the gentleman downstairs. Gentleman, just a common rug peddler. It's beyond me, Howard Billings, and a professor at that can associate with such riffraff. Amelia, this riffraff, as you call him, is really the salt of the earth. All he needs is to be iodized. Oh, oh miss, the, the sordid business details can be arranged with Amelia. And if the cost of the mortgage is a trifle high, don't you worry about it. We can always sell a little of the furniture. Isn't he a dear? You don't know how good he is. Even when he was a baby, he never cried. Not even when we dropped him. There's your apple, Mr. Johnson. I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, that's okay, mister. I can do a little favor for a guy that buys all my Navajo blankets. But they're beautiful, Mr. Johnson. Now... If you're all ready? Yeah, let her fly, mister. Is it okay if I keep on eating? Of course. Now be perfectly at ease. a mackerel. Dear, dear, dear. I wonder what could have gone wrong this time. No wonder. The rays were deflected. Hello? Dr. Lawrence is here, Professor. I'll be right up. Won't you sit down, Doctor? Amelia, I uh, thank you. I'm honored to welcome you to our humble village. Oh, thank you, Doctor. <clears throat> and uh, if you ever need anything like uh, medical attention or uh, fire insurance or marriage performed or a loan, perhaps, huh? Shall be delighted to oblige. Doesn't anybody else do anything in Jenksville? Huh? Oh, they, they vote once a year. Ah, Doctor. Professor? I have some very good news for you. Really? Now, guess what? No, I don't know. Well, go ahead, guess. Uh, do I look like a quiz kid? It is an indescribable pleasure to inform you, sir, that I'm about to pay off the mortgage. And it'll be an indescribable pleasure to me, sir, if that means you have to discontinue your, your mysterious activities in that basement. That, sir, is beyond discussion. Have you brought the filthy thing with you? What filthy thing? The mortgage, the leech you placed on my neck. Oh, the leech, yeah, I have to. Twenty-three percent. Please, Amelia, you're giving Miss Laden a wrong impression about me. I'm only charging him so high because for years, in my capacity as health officer, I've been trying to put an end to those, uh, shall we say, cheap quackeries. Quackeries, sir? Yes, sir. To a scientist like me, the word is charlatan. Don't you dare talk to the professor. Why not? Like that. Everyone around this town knows that you made your fortune in Shark Oil Hair Story. Uh, what's wrong with that? Where is the hair follicle that can resist 2,000 international units of vitamin A, huh? Where is it? Right there. Hmm? Oh, the hardening of the skull. My dear oh, sir. Oh, well, now, gentlemen, all we want to do is to settle a little business matter. Yes, I'll right. get the deed. Where's my purse? And an ink and pen, please. Sir. Now, 
here are the documents. Mm -hmm. I don't have a checking account. Will cash do? Mm -hmm. Oh, you are a child, aren't you? <laughs> Out of sheer calendar. <clears throat> Come in. Winnie, for Pete's sake, where have you been? I follow you all over New England like a wild man. I, I've got antiquitis. I'm going off my nut. Oh, don't mind him. I divorced him last year for mental cruelty. And I'm not going to stand here and let you browbeat me now. Look, Winnie, I've been drafted. I'm in the army. Well, that's wonderful. What are you doing here? I've got ten days off to straighten out my affairs, and the first thing I'm going to straighten out is you. Who are these people, sir? Don't call them people. Come on, let's get out of this rat hole. Oh, no. And it's not a rat hole. But I exterminated every one of them. You you didn't buy it. What if I did? Ah. Oh, it's nice of you, Bill, to think of me, but... Winnie, ever since you divorced me, I keep telling myself over and over, isn't it enough she kept me broke all my life? Why not let her give all her clothes away to phony beggars? Let her buy every piece of old junk she can lay her hands on. Let her get herself into jam after jam, but... No, it's no use. It's driving me wacky. Winnie, did you have to throw all your money away on this dump? You're just way ahead of yourself this time, Mr. Practical One. I'll show you I can be just as good at running a hotel as you were at running your swanky Somerset house. Well, I can turn this dump into the cutest, darlingest little colonial inn you ever saw and just fill it with tourists, too. Tourists? With no railroads? With tire and gas rationing? How do you expect the people to find this? This... The... Mm -hmm. You... You haven't bought it yet? Yes, she has. <laughs> 25 cents notary fee, please. Well, you, you, you hide behind this. Here? I beg your pardon, thank you. And this is yours, Professor? Well, of all the... How have you got the nerve to swindle please, this child out of it? Please, Ah, this is a momentous occasion. Success to you, my child. And while we're here, I'll help. I'll clean. <laughs> I, too, shall refer Wayfarers to your little tavern. Oh, thank you. Wayfarers? Holy jumping! All right, all right, I'm through, I'm through. I hope you starve. Look here, my good man. Do you have rooms? A what? I did not ask for a sylvan dell replete with prancing antelopes, merely a room. You really want to live here? What, may I ask, is so confoundedly incredible about that? Oh, nothing. Well... Uh, won't you come in, Mr... Uh... Brampton. J. Gilbert Brampton. Oh, yes. Well, what did you have in mind, Mr. Brampton? A single with a bath? <clears throat> oh, uh, I mean, without a bath. You see, we're sort of short on tubs. Allow oh. me to show you our choice accommodation, sir. No. Oh, definitely not. We're a little short on steps, too. an exposure, too. Satisfactory, sir? Yes. At five dollars a day? I should say that was reasonable. Yes, of course. bucks a day. That guy's cuckoo. I think he's lovely. And look at this darling place. All those lovely old birds. And that are so... Oh, 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 Bill. Oh, darling, you hurt? No, but however did that happen? Well, that's what I'd like to know. Nobody could have pushed it. Oh, who'd want to do that? The legs must have given way. It's funny she could happen just when you were standing there. 
Well, there's something fishy around here. I can smell it. Now, I suppose the place is full of ghosts and murderers. I didn't say that. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to stick around and see. Oh. Come on, let's get this thing out and take a look at it. What's my sweetest antique? Antiques are going to start that again for Pete's sake. There's that metal cruelty again. That's right. That's right. Just make yourself at home. Make yourself at home. And what brings you to these remote parts, Mr. Brampton? I am a choreographer. A dancer? You? Oh, no, no. I create the dances for others to do. I'm just roaming about, uh, sponging up, as it were, your native customs for my American ballet. Hmm. I see. <laughs> There he is. Guess I better go. What was that? That was Uncas. Uncas? <laughs> Who's Uncas? You haven't read J. Fenimore Cooper? Oh, yes, of course. The last of the Mohicans. <laughs> you mean that Uncas? Right. He's a great friend of Ebenezer's. And is this Uncas a, uh, a ghost? Oh, hi, dear boy. The pros and cons of survival after death are so confusing, I prefer not to think about it. Now, Brampton, if you'll come with me, I'll show you the ground. Oh. Oh, I don't know why they should interest the ballet master. You know, that guy's as slippery as an eel dipped in lard. The professor, he's a deer. He's a deer and I'm a dead duck. The last of the Mohicans is roaming around the house and he'd rather not think about it. Isn't it wonderful? I bought a ghost and such a distinguished one. Yeah. And there's nothing fishy about that? Oh, Bill. What? Don't you ever get tired of yourself? down there in the professor's laboratory. Bill, please. I saw it. I touched it. A dead corpse. Well, who was it? Well, I... Well, how should I know? Oh, I better not phone. Come on. Oh! Oh! oh. Hurry. Professor Billings' laboratory. Huh? Bill saw it. But that's dreadful. Goodness knows I always had my suspicions, but murder. That's a matter for the sheriff. <clears throat> well, come on, doctor. Sheriff at present. Sic transit gloria mundi. Which means uh, what I wanted to say. One never knows the secret of his neighbor's brain. Yeah, yeah, sure. Come on. <clears throat> Let's go. It's down there. Well, go ahead, go ahead. Wait up here, both of you. We might be up against a dangerous maniac. <clears throat> Professor Billings? Yes? Oh, oh. Could I see you for a moment, please? I'm busy. Ah. 
not too busy to put up your hands, huh? Will you go away? No. Who is this man? His name was Johnson, I believe. Was? Then you admit he's dead. You killed him. Now, doctor, you may not approve of what you choose to call my unorthodox scientific method. Certainly not. But surely you know that I'm no murderer. Oh, I know, but, but, but how did it die? Purely an accident. Oh. If he did die, I forgot to search him before I put him in the cabinet. Oh, but that's very silly. You forgot. You did kill him then. Now, doctor, let's not split hairs and strain at gnats. Now, I, of course, I, I admit I shouldn't have left him lying around. So, mm -hmm. so if you'll give me a hand, we can put him with the others. Mm -hmm. Others? What others? Only four more. Uh, now, don't be upset. That's one more good thing about my machine. It preserves them beautifully. Four more? Listen, you, you homicidal maniac. How dare you use such language in my own home? Go on, get out now, go on. Go I on. will not. You killed five men, you admitted it, and as an officer of the law, I, I do no one. They're heroes, immortal martyrs of my great experiment. Experiment? What experiment? What did you do with them? As the sheriff of this county, I demand to know the truth. To think that I should be forced to reveal my secret prematurely, robbed of my triumph, and by a manufacturer of bogus hair restorer. I beg your pardon? Charging me with the paltry crime of murder. I, who am revolutionizing evolution, Circumambulating it at one fell swoop. Circumambulating evolution in a swoop? Creating by inductive rays and biochemistry the ultimate specimen of human perfection, eternally young, immune from disease, the super superman himself. You see Mr. Johnson there? Huh? Oh, yeah. Then let me tell you, sir, but for one minute little error, that man, at this very moment, by sheer dynamic force, would be flying around this room like an inspired plane under his own power. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Tanks, cannon, flamethrowers. Ha! He would destroy Berlin. He would throttle Tokyo. Think of it. But for a monkey wrench in his pocket, that man would be winning the war for America right now. <laughs> P -p Professor, why didn't you tell me before what you were doing? <laughs> and to think I accused you that I was under the impression that, that your experiment was here, Brent. <laughs> then you're interested in the biochemical shortcut? Interested? Why, ever since I was a child, from, from my early youth. You are sure that but for a monkey wrench you would have it? Here it is. And the next gentleman I search, believe me. Professor, let me participate in your experiment, huh? professionally and financially. Uh, you're not thinking of exploiting my discovery the way you do your hair restorer? Do you imagine I could take advantage, exploit, capitalize on a great scientific discovery? Cheat millions of people all the world over? Profane my profession? <laughs> Suppose I make a few dumps. Don't you think I wouldn't put it right back into science? If I could be sure of that. I'll prove it to you. I'll give you anything you want. I mean, I'm willing to put a few dollars into your experiment right now. And we'll sign an agreement to that effect, huh? It's agreed. All right, I'll draw up a contract. <laughs> a few simple clauses. Are you hurt? No. Uh, say, Professor, where do you keep the other ones? I'll show you. May I suggest something? Let's remove this one, huh? By all means. Here, thank you. Just a second, Professor. Yeah. Where? Where to? Yeah. Right through there. All right. All right. Here. Yeah. Here. Just a minute, Doctor. Hmm? where they used to store the wines and the choice cheeses. Mm -hmm. 
now it enshrines the simple men who have chosen to be martyrs to a great cause. Mm -hmm. Very neat, very orderly. Mm -hmm. uh. Professor, they are superbly preserved. As a coroner, I must say, uh, you have already outmoded formaldehyde. Congratulations. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> uh, but as a sheriff, I would like to know, how did you keep anyone from, from missing your, your martyrs? Well, we have a great many door-to-door -door peddlers in this neighborhood. They never have any friends, poor fellows. No. See, this one sold alarm clocks. Oh. Over their neckties. Yeah, that's how he looks. Silk hosiery. Well, he probably didn't have any priority and, anyway. Uh, let me... Oh, yes, uh, encyclopedias. Oh, I'm sure he didn't mind very much. <sighs> how happy they will be when they realize the glory that has befallen them. Yes. Sic transit gloria mundi. I don't care what he said. I'm going down. what I mean, the, the, the dead man. The dead? Oh, he wasn't dead. Oh, no, Mr. Johnson wasn't dead. He wasn't dead? No, no, no. He was waiting for the professor, and then he suddenly fainted. Very high blood pressure. Well, where is he now? Huh? It's a very simple question. Where is he now? My, you are excited. But what's wrong with... So never mind me. I passed my physical. But did you pass a psychiatrist, huh? We have more important business. We have to drop our agreement. And... Where is he now? Now, look. Shouting will get you nowhere. Ask quietly. Hmm? I am asking quietly. Where is he? That's much better. He went home. See? No, I don't. Quit theory from Stolta, which means what can you do with a screwball? Uh, Professor, ink, pen, and paper, please. All right. I guarantee to be out of here the first thing in the morning. That'll be just dandy. <laughs> Not this time, Jojo. Why don't you look where you're going? Are you comfy? Sure, sure. just laid my 214th egg. You did? I won the prize. I got the blue ribbon. If I only could get my little chickens What a sap I've been. What an utter and complete dope. It's the old racket. First they sell you this pile of junk for a big price, then they make you sell it back to them cheaper, scaring you away. Bill, I give up. Well, don't you see? First the cupboard falls on you. That Indian war cry, ghost, and that phony corpse they planted down there. But you said he was dead. Well, they gave him some kind of medicine, made him look dead. Oh. It's the old sucker game, don't you see that? Of course, a sweet old professor and his faithful friends. But everybody's a crook to you. Contractum sanctum pactum, which means done and dished up. Now, then, all we have to do is to create our Superman. That's right. <laughs> but, 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 see, do we really have to wait till one of those peddlers gets around? It is a bother, isn't it? <laughs> but what else? Uh... S suppose we use that bumptious young man, that, that villain. Oh, huh? he'd never agree to it. Why? I don't think he trusts us. Oh. But, but see, he wouldn't have to trust us. Suppose we put him under anesthetic. Splendid. Doctor, you're giving me just what I needed. Yes, a jab in the lassitude. 
Now, let's see. What drug would we use? Drug? <laughs> we, we won't use any drug. <laughs> One light, firm little pet by an expert like me, and he'll trust us. But, Doctor, that would be violence. So, what of it? Compared to the boom we'll bring to humanity by turning that little worm into a superman? Mm. He's not a very promising specimen. No, but, but at least he has the temperament of a dive bomber. Mm. Well, guess or no guess. He had it coming to him, sneaking into my barn at night. I tried to explain to this, uh, this fellow that I was merely taking the evening air. Isn't a barn rather a peculiar place to go for air? He was after my pigs, that's what. And he'd have got him if uncles hadn't yelled and warned me. I loathe pigs. Yeah. Now listen, you guys. I want you all to get this through your heads. When he bought this dump, see? And she's not going to be scared into selling it back no matter what you do. But nobody wants to sell it back to me, Bill. Why, well, you were the only... Shut up! Now, the first guy that pulls one more phony bug house stunt, corpses, sleepwalking, bodies floating around, anything gets this, see? Smack on the beezer. Why, the young man is deranged. Well, why doesn't uh, somebody arrest somebody? Huh? Oh, oh, I'm contemplating that. Now, back to bed with you. All of you, go on, shoot. Right, go on, get back to bed, all of you. breaks a leg, then I'll set it knock me. <laughs> Come in, down here, Bill. Come Get in the ladder. Come on here. Come on, help me. Oh. 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 Are you hurt? Here, let, let me pick you up. Look, are you hurt? No, no, no. Oh, isn't it adorable now we've cleaned it up? Yeah, yeah. Come on, admit it. Well, what good is it all out here at the end of nowhere? I rented another room this morning. He's a well-traveled old gentleman with just oodles of money. Oh. Why, he paid me a month in advance. Fine, fine, fine. When did you say he goes into the army? The day after tomorrow. Seems a long time to wait with, with the axis on the rampage. <laughs> Frankly, I'm straining at the leash, too, but, but we must restrain ourselves. You saw what happened last night. 
Yes, and if the army did need him, I would have committed him to the squirrel pen at Idlewhite Sanitarium, so help me. Ah, well, it takes all sorts of people to make up this little world of ours. Doctor? Hmm? Look. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Good morning to you, sir. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Is the lady of the house in the house, or is this a house? Certainly it's a house. Perhaps we can help you. Well, it ain't exactly for men. Uh, what isn't for men? Mr. Stanley, he's the district sales manager. He says, brush off the husbands and rush the wife. Uh, uh, come on, let's see. What is it? Well, all right, but, but you ain't gonna like it. Doctor, look. Powder puffs. So wonderful. Yeah, you know what, you dab on your kisser. Look at this one. Oh, that's called a Pekingese pinkaroo. We'll take them. Well, which one? All of them. Huh? Certainly all of them. Will, will $50 be sufficient? I mean, $20? 20 Twenty. Oh. Oh. If, if we can get him into the cabinet before he comes to, it'll save explaining. This one will fly. I can feel it. <clears throat> A heart like an ox. <clears throat> mm -mm. Huh? Don't forget, Professor, this one we have to search. Remember? <clears throat> Child. Hey, wh wh what's cooking? <laughs> hey, where did that take of a dick of scalp from? Uh, you fainted and we carried you down here. And I might add, you're very heavy, sir. I did? Gee, I'm sorry for putting you gents out. But you don't know what it means to me selling all my stock. Me, what Mr. Gilbert says, could never sell nothing because I got an inferiority complex. My dear sir, you just step into that cabinet and we'll cure it in five minutes. It will? You mean I'll be like other salesmen? Certainly. Certainly. Irresistible. No door, no nothing will stop you. Brother, lead me to it. <clears throat> Gee, maybe I'll even win the gold star for sales district 46. Maybe, maybe. Now, there you are. Now, just relax. I'll relax. <laughs> <laughs> Almost ruined my electric helmet. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, Professor. But I'm different than other people, like I told you. Everybody's tickless on the bottom of their feet, but not me. Here. Go on. Tickle me and see. Tickle? Don't get me, see? The only place I'm tickless is on the top of my dome. Here, try it, Professor. <clears throat> Hold it a minute, Doctor. <laughs> Why didn't we think of this before? Excuse me, please. You haven't faith. I have faith, but flying makes me dizzy. This will no, no, cure no, no, Please! But, but, but I have so many things wrong with me. Fat feet and a weak heart. He has a weak heart and he's ticklish. Something always goes wrong. Mm. Ah, you ain't gonna put that thing on me. No, no, no. A, but see, would you mind taking a little anesthetic? You Just mean, a little? You mean sort of like taking a Mickey Finn? Uh-huh. A little bit more gentle. Okay. Slip it to me. Call me out of wishes. All right. Let's go and get it. Good morning, Mr. Captain. Oh, uh, 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 good morning. Doing a little research for your ballet? Oh, yes, I was, I was uh, merely uh, uh, examining the pattern of the rug for the um, decor of the mise-en-scene. Mm-hmm. 
He's after something in this house. If he's a choreographer, I'm Pavlova. You mean the dance one? Uh, say, Professor, are there any secret passages or hidden rooms? Not that I know of, except... Uh, oh, uh, run to my house. It's the only big one in town. And ask Emily to give you the bottle from the shelf, huh? What wings? <laughs> and, and don't tell anybody what it's for. Who was that? Oh, just a traveling salesman. Your, uh, your short was a living salesman, gentlemen. Today, yes. For tomorrow, I can't guarantee. That's telling him, doctor. <laughs> I don't like this. It, it's just like reading somebody else's mail. Keep quiet, will you? Nothing but clothes. That proves it. What? If he were just a petty crook, we would have found something. The fact that he conceals the evidence proves how dangerous he is. Oh. What, what do you want? You know it isn't middle time yet. What do you want? <coughs> something must be wrong. Anam <coughs> Shia Kalenda. You know she has the most amazing instinct for crime and corruption. So? <clears throat> well, I, I guess your kitten was mistaken this time. <clears throat> it's the new guest. Murdered. Help! What's the matter? Uh, upstairs in the room, the man, the old man. He's a great big knife in his back like Now, that. if this is another gag. Police. Uh. Hello? Hello, hello, hurry. The police, please. Never mind why that's none of your business. Get me the police. I've got to see this. J. Gilbert Brampton. Huh? You think he did? <laughs> Hello, the police! Please, hurry! Hello, help. Hello, the police! There has been a murder. Murder? Murder? Where? Yes, of course. It's an act of cold-blooded murder. H hurry, please. Please, hurry. Look here, you two. There was nothing up there. Huh? No uh, knife, no body, nothing. Huh? But, but we saw it. Didn't we? Uh, I have to see her. Look, fun's fun, but cut it out, will you, kids? She was right. But you're not implying there was no court. No, but it's gone. Oh, oh. Oh, Doctor, where are you? It isn't in Brampton's room. It's not. Oh, that proves he did it. He's covering up his tracks. He's a homicidal maniac. Well, he may strike at you. Huh? Or me. Well, we better stick together till the police comes. What's the big idea, smart guy? Yeah, that was a new tire. There's a munitions plant over yonder, and you was ordered to halt. Yes, but we're state officers. Yeah. 
Well, get back on the other side of the bridge and we'll see. Look. Go on. Look, we're yes. on the way to a murder at Billings Tavern. Sure, and every second counts. Sure. Yeah? What's the number out there? Uh, Jinxville, 6-4. Oh, come on. We'll see. No, now, wait a minute. Come on. Now, take it. Get Why don't you... See, will you? Jenksville, 6-4. Hello? Yeah, this is a tavern. There's a couple of guys here who call themselves cops, been yapping about a murder out at your place. Murder? Somebody's been kidding you. There's no murder out here. <laughs> I'm positive. Okay, buddy, thanks. Well, that's that. And no more corpses, do you understand? What are you guys trying to pull? Nothing. I'm telling you, the guy on the phone said there was a murder. And another thing, why didn't you stop when I hollered halt? Well, we didn't hear you. We were talking. Yeah? What about? Nothing, just war strategy. War strategy, huh? Well, come along with me. You can tell your plot to the captain. Look, March. No, no, Look, you can't do this to us. We're taxpayers. Come on, you, yeah. come on. Take it come easy, on. will you, please? Did you see that knife? He pointed it directly at me. Hi, gents. Emily wasn't home, so I guess it was okay to bust the front window, wasn't it? Y yes, of course. Yeah. Now, couldn't we lock him up on intent to commit murder? Huh? Murder? I didn't kill nobody. All I did was pick up oh, a lock and I chose... Not chose a... you. No, no, no. Not you. Before the world is suddenly deprived of my services, come what may, I will complete my great work. Now, come with me, my friend. And when you come out, I guarantee you, you won't know yourself. I won't? No. Gee, that's wonderful. Will it fix my brains so I can do arithmetic like the kids do? Like the kids. Take a smell of this now. I can't smell it through my black sinuses. Black sinuses? Inhale deeply. Am I unconscious yet? You most certainly are not. Gee, that's a shame. Maybe it ain't the real McCoy. Maybe it's some intoxicating beverages or something. Here, try it. I don't know what it is. See, I told her that. Oh. What'd I do? What'd I do? It's murder. And it ain't right to murder. My mother told me so. Help! Murder! Murder! I killed him, the professor and the doctor. Again, huh? No, this is the first time. I never killed them before, honest. This is the end. Out they go, both of them, laboratory and all. I don't know what could have been wrong. Ah. Well, what happened here? I didn't do it on purpose, honest. All I did was take the bottle, of see? And then tell me to take a smell out of it, and I smell. And it did smell bad. And then I said, go on, you smell. And he smelled. See, now, then I said, you smart, go on, see? And that's all what happened. What's the matter? Don't you feel well? Quintuplets. Ooh. Gee. Now I'm a wholesale murderer. Mama! Good morning. Where are we? How did they get here? What? I, I, I haven't the faintest idea. But at last, Doctor. Hmm? Quick, into the cabinet. Say, that's a wonderful. Wait, wait, wait. We better, we better make sure. It's much too great an honor for him, but better second class superman than none whatsoever. <clears throat> Somebody's trying to break in. Maybe it's the police. Into the store. Quick. Let's look at this one. What happened to me all the time? 
Something always goes wrong. Come on. Good morning, sir. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, isn't it? <laughs> we'll buy everything you've got. Uh, with twenty dollars. You have the match, no? Uh -huh. Oh yes, a match, please. <laughs> oh, well. Don't anybody move, or I'll light this fuse. In this sack, I have forty kilos of dynamite, and I don't mean ravioli. I'm a human bomb. A human bomb? Yes. I am a fascist aviator who just escaped from the prison camp in Canada. We shall stay here until it is dark, the three of us. And then you will take me to the munition plant where there will be the unexpected fireworks. Well, you oh, God, God. So Silence, I'm not telling you. I am telling you. And now perhaps you will be kind enough to relax until it is dark. Ah, good. Remember. You are dealing with Silvio, the pride of the Air Force, who has to his credit 19 planes shot out from under him. Six of them, bombers. for a gag like this. Oh, but you're wonderful, darling. You knew from the minute you arrived they were fakes, didn't you? <laughs> well, let's get out of here. Gosh, it's fun in a way being in tune. <laughs> false word or action, and there will be no one alive. Capito? Yes, yes. Capito, capito. Hey, the both of you is repucurated, huh? And I throw those crepes and candles. Yeah, I think you better go along, yeah, my good man. Here's your money, sir. Ten, no, I know, twenty dollars and take, take your powder puffs and everything. Ain't there no way you're gonna fix it at me so I can take the treatment? Later, later. Oh, can't you bop me on the head with something? With that shillelagh? Not now. Please run along. Hey, let's try it. <clears throat> super, superman. Irresistible force charging into immovable object. Hmm? Then I get another chance, huh? Certainly. Wow. Step right into here, sir, please. Just step in. <clears throat> there you are, Doctor. Be as gentle as possible. Certainly, certainly. Uh, close your eyes, okay? I told you, no monkey doodle. Don't 
jump at us like that. What are you doing to him? Oh, th th just a little electric tonic, you know, to invigorate his, his powder puff personality. Yeah, only an Americano would want their personality. Uh, please, please. Most lifelike, aren't they? <laughs> Bill, they are alive. I mean, dead. Oh, no, 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 you're, you're just getting yourself hysterical. <gasps> They're dead all. people! <laughs> yeah, I, I know, honey. <laughs> oh, bless my soul. Hey, it was Brampton. <laughs> oh, my fingers. <laughs> Get the candle. Where are we? In your room. I, oh, well, where's the police? Why aren't they here? Why, you stopped them. I stopped them. Oh, well, we got to get them. Come on. Well, I mean, just stop me from stopping them. And I stopped them. Just oh, stop them anyway. Oh. Come on. How do you work this doohickey? What? Hello? You got me the state police. Yeah. Yeah, quick. Why didn't those cops come anyway? Why'd they have to believe me? Another one. Oh, it's Mr. Brampton. He's the one that screamed. Oh, what did you do to him? We had a lot of trouble getting here. She killed him. I saw her. Amelia! What do you mean you saw her? Say, who was it told that soldier there wasn't any murder here? Oh, well, I did, but... You the... see? And she stabbed him. Have you gone crazy? All right, you two, and remember, anything you say will be held against you. Wait, oh. he's not dead. Oh. 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 I must have... I must have... must have fainted. <laughs> Where is that murderous creature? That female butcher. M Mr. Brampton, the, 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 the knife. Knife? Oh, yeah, it must have been deflected by my uh, corset. It just goes to show you can still rely on whalebone. Even when pussyfooting around secret passageways, Mr. Brampton? Miss Layden, it may interest you to know that Benedict Arnold once pussyfooted through those very same passageways in 1775. He did? He certainly did. Well, where is he now? Oh, when you're not going early American on me again, are you? After what happened downstairs? Downstairs? Say, what goes on around here? Yeah. Miss Layden, you are the possessor of a priceless historic landmark. As curator of the Historical Society of America, I have authenticated it. I regret having posed as a choreographer, but until I was sure... Oh, Bill, it's priceless. Yeah? But is it worth anything? Well, I should be more than happy to pay her $20,000 any time she wants. All right, all right, but what about downstairs? There she is, the female who tried to assassinate me. I got a lemon meringue pie in the oven. Lemon meringue, my eye. Well, I only did it for his money. I wanted to get a hen house for my poor homeless chickens. What homeless chickens? The ones I'm going to get. Well, what's the use of talking about the worthless varmints if you ain't got any? Well, it's better than talking about your smelly old pigs. Uh, pigs, chickens, what goes here? I saw what you did with the lodger in room four when you wanted to get the money for your pig farm. And I know where you hid the body. Come here. Come, here. Come on, Junior. Junior. Look, tucked 
stacked up there on the top shelf. That's no zoot suit you're looking at. I'll say it ain't. No one will understand when we did it just for the professor. Uh, Come on. You're always talking so much. Gab, 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 gab all the time. Hey, Fred. Phone the corner, Dr. Lorenz. Dr. Lawrence. Professor Billings. Hey, wait a minute. There's five more downstairs. Five more what? Bodies. Bodies? Oh, and that pipsqueak of a private said everything was going to be lovely here. Come on, I'll show you. Forty seconds to go. Oh, what? For the time. Remember, we are on the brink of annihilation. The bodies are in the back room. Go on, officer. I am going. Where's, where's Fred? Here I am, Joe, old boy. Whatever they're doing, I don't like it. Neither do I. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> if any one of you has a weak heart, I advise you to leave this room because you are about to witness a phenomenon that will flabbergast, yes, flabbergast, the imagination of everyone here. Bah, none. <clears throat> oh. I thank you. Well, uh, 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 if you wouldn't mind. Uh, oh, he seems quite well done. I don't believe it. They murdered him like they murdered the other five. Please, please, the word is martyrized. Why, they're Ding Betty, like these two. I should have brought the straitjackets. Do you realize to whom you are addressing your childish remarks to? Of course I do. I am speaking to him. Yes, and I'm talking to you. Now, you come along, boys. And you can stay here. Stay here. They all stay here. Capito? Hey, what's going on around here? It's your hoodie. There will be no information leak out until the arsenal will go boom, ba boom. <laughs> oh, won't they? Come along, Jojo. Watch out! Watch out! He's a human bomb. <laughs> well, isn't that delightful? A time bomb or a fuse bomb? A fuse bomb. <laughs> oh, hey, it is a fuse. Why doesn't somebody do something? Come on down out of there before I perforate you. Mm, so. My friend will shoot, then the dynamite will go up, and we are all little nothings. <laughs> Ghosts! Oh, oh no, that's that! Oh. I'll get it. Give me this thing. Hey, hey, hey. What are you trying to do? Steal my separate case? Come on. Get out of here. Don't too late. Get there it goes. Too late for what? What's going on? Foy. Oh, come on. All right. Come on, Jojo. Mr. Professor? Can I have my apple now? Yes, and my alarm clocks, too. Look, they are not dead. They must have been in a state of suspended animation. <laughs> Congratulations, Professor. Our names will go down in history. We invented a method to preserve life. But I did so want to make a Superman. Come on, you're all nuts. Oh, now, now, wait a minute. We just sold this place for $20,000. Yes. And I've got the certified check upstairs in my other suit. Oh, where well, I'm taking you, they got everything. Certified checks, Superman, everything. Come on. Where are you taking us? To a nice, quiet little place called Idlewild Sanitarium. But that's the asylum. So it is, so it is. But don't worry, Professor. 
I am the chairman of the board of directors up there. 